Good evening and welcome to California Today. I'm Daniel Hall, sitting in for Lang Jang. Here's a preview of some of today's stories. Almost in tandem with pandemic lockdowns, the state saw a sharp rise in retail theft. One district attorney talks about what he thinks led to the surge in crime. Speaking of lockdowns, there was another surge in a certain negative activity, domestic violence. One study says that one in five Californians were victims of abuse in that time frame. And new tech is helping firefighters, drones dropping fireballs. It's really fight fire with fire, allowing them to burn away fuel from areas that are hard to get to. Organized retail theft seemed to spring out of nowhere two years ago as pandemic lockdowns began. A California district attorney says that increased lawlessness hit the state due to misguided policies. Rampant shoplifting has been making headlines since 2020, from organized mass looting to smash and grabs in broad daylight. In California, Vern Pearson, district attorney for El Dorado County, told California insider CMAC Karami that some Californians are led to believe there are no consequences for what they do. So what we've done is we've convinced a large number of people here in the state that um, there is no consequence for their action. And so we have this increased lawlessness that comes from it. The view is I can take other people's property because nothing will happen to me. Pearson served several years with California's Department of Justice as Deputy Attorney General. He says that most retailers have learned that if they call law enforcement regarding a theft of less than $950, law enforcement will not respond. If they do, at most, they will issue a citation. The practical reality is most re retailers in, in California has some type of policy telling the employees not to report low-level property crimes. And that's for a number of understandable reasons. One is there's no consequence for if, if they do report it. Pearson says the second reason is that the perpetrator can sue the stores if the employees injure the thieves. We're a very litigious society here in California, and the stores are, and their insurance carriers really are afraid of being sued for uh, trying to stop a crime that has little or no consequence. Many retail stores either boarded up their windows or closed shop during the string of smash and grab robberies during the last two years. The district attorney talked about Proposition 47, which changes certain theft and drug possession crimes from felony to misdemeanors. Pearson opposes that policy. I think all the people who oppose Prop 47 who are knowledgeable, like myself, said we didn't expect for this to change in two years. It's something that's going to take five, six, seven, eight before we feel the full effects of Prop 47. And that's where we are now. Certain counties have different policies than others. Pearson said it's well known that most people arrested in San Francisco will not be booked into jail. And if they are booked into jail, they will be released quickly. He cited an incident that took place on public transit in the Bay. Technically in San Francisco, uh, he, the individual was arrested, taken to the San Francisco jail. It was a Sunday. And the jail basically told law enforcement, we're not going to take this individual because it's a Sunday and we're not doing intake today. I think there will be a consequence and there will be a tipping point that happens when the public will begin more aggressively to push back against these misguided policies. Pearson says though the crime-related policies are well intended, they have created a lot of the problems that the state is now dealing with. To watch the full program, find California Insider on YouTube or Epic TV on the Epic Times website. A recent study has shown that one in five Californians have been physically or sexually assaulted. Its findings revealed a significant rise in violent crime during pandemic lockdowns. A 2022 California study on violence experiences across the lifespan traced an alarming rise in violence. They concluded it was due to growing economic insecurity, unemployment, and social inequality. Its findings revealed that one in five Californians have experienced physical or sexual violence within the past year. The 33-page survey report is the only statewide assessment for physical and sexual violence in the nation. It provides a, quote, unique opportunity to investigators to understand and hopefully reduce violent crimes. 
Dr. Anita Raj, the study's lead researcher and a professor at the UC San Diego School of Medicine and Division of Social Sciences, said that the violence in California is at epidemic proportions. She says current violence prevention efforts are clearly woefully inadequate and often ignore the gender nature of violence, its intersections with other socioeconomic vulnerabilities, and its disproportionate effects on marginalized populations. The study shows that one in seven adults in California experienced sexual violence and one in 12 adults experienced physical violence within the past year. It also revealed an increase of victimization and that most victims who experienced violent crime never reported it. In the survey, participants also expressed negative mental health effects from violent crimes, including anxiety and depression. The findings from the statewide report only confirms that Californians experienced epidemic levels of violence during the pandemic. It concludes that new policies and programs would address the rising trend of violence. A real estate website put two California cities at the top of a list of places that people want to move away from. That says fewer people are buying homes, but relocation is up. According to a housing report published on Tuesday by real estate website Redfin, San Francisco and Los Angeles are the top two cities that people wanted to leave in July and August. The research found that for people looking to leave the Bay Area, Sacramento is a top in-state destination. Seattle and Washington are the most frequently searched cities for homebuyers moving out of California. The report also shows that the number of people considering leaving San Francisco has declined recently due to home prices coming down from their pandemic highs. For home buyers leaving Los Angeles, San Diego is the top in-state destination. As far as moving out of California, Las Vegas is the most popular. Taylor Marr, Redfin Deputy Chief Economist, said in the report, the overall slowdown in the popularity of relocating are both due to high home prices and mortgage rates that have doubled since last year. Redfin sampled the data of 2 million other users in more than 100 metro areas during July and August. 2022 has been another rough year in terms of fighting state wildfires. They often require firefighters to trek through dangerous terrain to extinguish them. The founder of a tech company in the Midwest told NTD's David Lamb how his team is helping the fire lines with drones and software. Drones dropping flame spheres may sound like a futuristic battlefield technique, and in a way it is. It's giving firefighters another meaning to fighting fire with fire adding tech into the wildfire control equation. It's the brainchild of the drone amplified team. The CEO and co-founder Carrick Detweiler has been with the company since 2015. So we have um, our Ignis system, which attaches to uh, drone systems, have these little ping pong balls. So they're, they're these things that are actually have a chemical inside and relatively inert to start out with, but right before we drop them, we puncture them and inject them with a second chemical that starts a reaction right after we drop it. The company refers to them as dragon eggs, which ignite after 30 to 60 seconds later to start a small fire. The system is used to start backburns and controlled burns, eliminating fuel ahead of out of control wildfires. The spheres are also used by full-size helicopter ignition systems. So it's it's great to hear, you know, what the firefighters say. I mean, they often are just saying, like, this is a game changer. Detweiler told NTD there's a labor shortage and wants to provide tools to help make firefighters' jobs more effective. And got connected with the U.S. Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management and realized that there was actually a lot of challenges involved in um, combating these wildfires, in particular the dangers of aviation and just the need for more people and, and looking at how the technology could actually fill this gap where, you know, where there just are not enough firefighters to do the job safely. The drone-based aerial ignition system can deploy up to 120 spheres a minute and control spacing, such as one sphere every 50 feet, depending on the needs of the fire. So that allows firefighters to really precisely uh, locate where they want to put down this fire line to create a backburn to use up all the fuel in advance of a wildfire. He says Cal Fire uses their systems. Yeah, so we have uh, more than 100 systems out in the field right now. Um, a lot of those are with the you know, federal agencies, U.S. Forest Service and Bureau of Land Management. But 
you know, there we have systems in California with Cal Fire and Oregon, uh, Colorado, all the way to Florida. For the past few decades, environmental red tape has limited the practice of prescribed burns. But Detweiler says things are changing. We're seeing that change in the firefighting community as we're recognizing that, you know, you fire is part of the natural ecological process. So you really need to have fire regularly to use up the, you know, all the, the debris on the forest floor so that when there is a fire, it doesn't become these massive uh, and, you know, wildfires. It's just, you know, a minor fire that's easier to put out, contain, and let these natural processes, processes occur. He works with a small team of about 10 people, and they build all of their systems in-house. In addition to aerial ignition, they have software that can utilize thermal and visual cameras to see fire through smoke and help with mapping, providing latest data with an eye in the sky to increase situational awareness. Drone Amplified is looking to scale to larger systems that can cover more area and also smaller systems for agility. David Lamb, NTD News, California. We're going to take a short break now, but don't go anywhere because here's a look at all the great stories we've got ready for you when we come back. The state will audit a Southern California electricity supplier. That's after allegations came forward that they failed to deliver on promises. Enrollment in public schools dropped throughout the state during lockdowns. We'll look at which parents decided to take their kids out of public schools. And the San Diego Zoo has named its newborn white rhino. We've got a look at how he spends his days. That and more on California Today. The state has recently agreed to audit the Orange County Power Authority. It's after the group allegedly failed to deliver on promises it made to the community. The state will audit the Orange County Power Authority, or OCPA, following controversy. The OCPA has been accused of mismanagement, inaction, and a lack of transparency. Senator Tom Umberg announced the upcoming audit last week. He said, we owe it to the taxpayers to explain why their energy costs are going up and who or what is responsible. The legislators have received multiple complaints since OCPA started operating, according to Umberg. These include electricity rates being higher than before OCPA took over and failure to purchase enough electricity to avoid service interruption this summer. Other state senators and assembly members joined Umberg in requesting the audit. Previously, the Orange County Board of Supervisors voted to launch an investigation into the legal and financial risks associated with the OCPA. An Orange County grand jury also investigated the OCPA this year, finding issues with its transparency. OCPA CEO Brian Probolski filed a whistleblower complaint in May against some of the authority's board members, alleging they sought to fire him. An investigation into the complaint is currently pending. Unemployment fraud could be much more widespread than reported. That's according to the head of a global data and analytics company. According to analysis, the Employment Development Department, or EDD, most likely paid out more in fraud than initially estimated. In an interview with KCRA, Haywood Talcove, the CEO of LexisNexis Risk Solutions Government Division said, EDD's fraud is closer to, quote, $32.6 billion, not the $20 billion that they've been talking about. Between March 2020 and January 2021, the EDD paid out $114 billion in unemployment benefits. 95% are associated with the Federal Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, or PUA program. The remaining 5% is associated with California's unemployment insurance. The EDD confirmed that 9.7% of the payments are fraudulent and are investigating another 17%. In May, the EDD blocked an attempt to steal hundreds of millions in benefits for unemployment insurance using paper and fax applications. The department estimated it prevented 47,000 potentially fraudulent claims worth up to $560 million. The fraudsters switched to more of a manual, old-fashioned, if we want to use that word, fraud scheme, which was to submit written applications for unemployment insurance to EDD that were fraudulent. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is 
that EDD identified it early on, noticed a dramatic uptick in the number of manually submitted uh, applications for unemployment insurance and did not pay a single penny out to any of those fraudsters. Scott reminds people to protect their personal identifying information, like their social security number. NTD reached out to the EDD for a comment. California parents put their money where their mouths are in terms of taking action about education. New research has looked into how many parents have changed their student's school and what led to it. The trends of changing children's schooling due to COVID lockdowns has now been confirmed with new research. Most students who have left public school for either homeschool or charter schools are from English-speaking, white, Democratic-leaning families that make over $150,000 per year. That, according to research conducted by the Policy Analysis for California and the University of Southern California Rossier School of Education. The organizations polled 2,000 registered voters in the state, including 500 parents. Among the parents surveyed, 52% previously enrolled their children in public schools. That number dropped 41%. Private school enrollment remained steady at 28%. Charter school attendance rose from 15% to 23% and homeschooling from 3% to 7%. As for why it's happening, 38% of parents said they wanted a different educational experience for their children. That was followed by dissatisfaction with lockdown measures at 31% and individual support at 30%. A long-time subway project in San Francisco finally has an opening date. It will start with weekend service this November. On Tuesday, the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency announced the Central Subway project will open starting November 19th. There will be shuttle service on the weekends between 4th and Brandon Station to Chinatown Station. During its soft launch in November and December, passengers can ride for free on weekends. It will transition to daily service in January. The project has been delayed multiple times and cost about $1.6 billion. A six-week-old white rhino at the San Diego Zoo finally has a name. He's now old enough to run around the habitat, but don't be fooled by how small he looks. He already weighs more than most people. A six-week-old male southern white rhino at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park has been named Neville. Born on August 6th, Neville has gained enough stamina and bulk that it can now explore the two-acre main habitat. He, like most rhinos, enjoys splashing around in the water, rolling in the mud, and exploring his new world. Rhinos coat themselves with a layer of mud that acts as sunscreen, bug repellent, and keeps them cool. Neville currently weighs 250 pounds and could grow to be between 4,000 and 5,000 pounds at around three years of age. Now let's take it over to NDD's Thomas Christian for your sports roundup. I'm Thomas Christian, giving you the California Today Sports Roundup. The LA Lakers have signed point guard Dennis Schroeder to a one-year, $2.64 million deal, according to The Athletic. When announcing the signing, the Lakers claimed they had a very specific purpose for Schroeder. The role they claimed they had in mind was to use Schroeder as an on-ball defender to chase around the quicker guards in the Western Conference during crunch time scenarios, namely Grizzlies guard John Morant and reigning finals MVP Stephen Curry. And while yes, Schroeder is capable of playing that role on the defensive end, we must first ask the question, who would Schroeder be playing over in crunch time if he was the point guard? It does not need to be restated how poor the fit between current Lakers point guard Russell Westbrook is with LeBron James. But just this off season, the Lakers have added two point guards in Schroeder and Patrick Beverly to add to an already deep position group. Including their offseason additions, the Lakers now have four true point guards on the roster not named Russell Westbrook. Remember, they still have Kendrick Nunn on the roster even though he didn't play all of last year, and they've signed Scottie Pippen Jr. as an undrafted free agent. Westbrook himself said that he would be, quote, very open to a trade from the Lakers, but Los Angeles has found it extremely difficult to find a suitable trade partner. Given Westbrook's massive salary of $47.1 million this upcoming season, and the fact that they would like to get something actually valuable in return for him. Still, Schroeder and others are standing by, already on the roster if 
or maybe when, Westbrook exits the Lake Show stage left. In the first game of a back-to-back -back doubleheader, Austin Barnes belted a two-run home run and Miguel Vargas singled home the go-ahead run during a five-run eighth as Los Angeles rallied for a victory over visiting Arizona. Barnes had three hits for the Dodgers. Reliever Ryan Pepeo pitched three scoreless innings before Chris Martin retired the D-backs in the ninth for his second save. Dalton Varsho and Christian Walker homered for the Diamondbacks. Dodgers 6, Diamondbacks 5. In the second game of the day, Drew Jamison gave up two runs over six innings in his second career start, and Arizona took the win. Arizona took advantage of a season-high four Dodgers errors and scored three unearned runs. Kettle Marte homered for the Diamondbacks, who won for the second time in their last 22 games at Los Angeles. Max Muncy hit a two-run homer for the Dodgers, who lost to Arizona at home for the first time in seven games this season. Los Angeles is now 13-4 against Arizona. Diamondbacks 5, Dodgers 2. Mike Clevinger became the third straight Padres starter to record a scoreless outing as San Diego defeated St. Louis. The Padres earned a fourth straight win to strengthen their hold in the National League wildcard berth as both Philadelphia and Milwaukee lost. Clevinger gave up three hits on five and two-third innings. Padres 5, Cardinals 0. David VR homered, Austin Slater and Tyro Estrada had two hits each, and San Francisco beat Colorado in Denver. Tyler Rogers, one of six relievers to pitch for San Francisco, got the win, and Harleen Garcia came on with two outs in the ninth for his first save. Carlos Rodon was initially slated to start for the Giants, but a blister on his pitching hand pushed him back to Friday night. CJ Krohn homered among his three hits, and Alan Trejo had two hits for Colorado. Rocky starter Kyle Freeland left after allowing three runs, two earned, on five hits over six innings. Giants six, Rockies three. And that's all for the sports. That's all we've got for you tonight. We'd like you to join us again on California Today every weekday at 8.30 p.m. Make sure to check out our broadcast on our California Today webpage. You can find it at ntd.com slash California dash today. You can also find all of our top latest clips there ready to share with friends and family. Send us a message on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or through our email, california.today at ntd.com. I'm Daniel Hall, sitting in for Lang Jang. Have a wonderful evening.